Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Specialist at Tripwire, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. You will be hearing three presentations this hour, Five Steps to Cloud Security, Tripwire Expert Ops, and Automation and Integrations. You will also hear a few Did You Know segments sprinkled in. Before we start, I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. If you are experiencing technical difficulty, please click on the Help widget. It is the question mark icon on your console and covers common technical issues. If you have a question during the presentation, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. One of our experts will reach out to you via email after the webcast. If you are one of the first 50 attendees today, you will be seeing a $5 Starbucks e-card in your inbox soon. Lastly, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the on-demand webcast. If you would like to receive a proof of attendance document to submit for a CPE credit, please respond to that email. So now, without further delay, let's begin. We hope you enjoy the presentations and find them useful to you. Thank you. Troopwire is proud to introduce IP360 9.0. With built-in support for cloud environments and offline assessments of disconnected assets, IP360 allows you to inventory devices and applications and helps you prioritize changes based on risk. Hi, this is Gabe Off here, and I'm a senior product manager here at Tripwire. I have specific focus on our cross-product strategy as it relates to cloud, DevOps, and container technologies. Today we're going to be discussing five steps you can take to ensure that your cloud environments are secure. And I'm going to be briefly touching on how Tripwire can help with that. So the first step in securing your public cloud environments are ensuring that your accounts are set up properly and have a secure configuration. What we do at Tripwire through our Tripwire Enterprise product and um, Cloud Management Assessor is we allow you to go in and look at how each individual cloud account is set up, um, whether it's an Amazon AWS account, a Microsoft Azure account, or a Google Cloud Platform account. What we do is we go in and we actually do some API calls and do some tests against how those particular, each one of those accounts are set up, and then we report that back into the Tripwire Enterprise Console. We also have a way that we can test against various benchmarks that are out in the industry, and one in particular is the CIS policy. CIS has a policy for each one of these cloud environments. Um, in particular, Amazon and Microsoft Azure. We're going to be touching on that a little bit later, um, but I did want to touch, um, you know, make a point of that here early on, that we do have um, some policies in place that you can go ahead and, and test against, and I actually, I think, have a screenshot of that later in the presentation. So what this is going to do, it's going to ensure that you have the secure configuration of your cloud, each cloud provider. It's going to monitor your cloud management accounts for change, so it's actually going to alert um, if something changes that you're not expected. Um, and and that, that'll really help um, eliminate down, potentially eliminate downtime and uh, excess surcharges from those particular cloud vendors. And we're also going to be able to gain visibility across your entire hybrid environment. So this is key because not only does Tripwire Enterprise allow you to see how various um, servers and um, virtual machines and so forth are set up on on premise, on but then also allows you to do it in each one of these public cloud environments. And the unique thing about Tripwire is then we bring all of that data into one centralized location, which really makes it much easier for you to secure all of these various cloud, uh, private cloud, public cloud, and maybe even on-premises servers that you have and are administering. 
Next, we will be switching to the second step of securing your public cloud. So now that we've completed step one in ensuring that the public cloud accounts are secure and set up properly and we're monitoring those particular accounts for change, now we're going to switch to looking at the cloud storage platforms and in particular how we can securely monitor those particular platforms for uh, change uh, to make sure that there's no publicly accessible files and so forth. Um, a lot of times we refer to this at Tripwire as serverless FIM, um, and it really is allows us to go and look at AWS S3 or Azure Blob Storage and go look to see that files are set up in a way that um, that is secure, of course, and then also that um, we have some integrations with Cloud Trails in particular in AWS where we can do some real-time alerting that when files change, we can alert on that as well. And, and particularly if you have some sensitive files that you're not expecting to change, um, we, can, we can certainly alert on that. Um, so I, I touched on it here in the first uh, bullet, but uh, these cloud services where you have arbitrary files that can be stored up in these cloud platforms, and they can be access, ex, um, accessible with a simple URL. So there's no place to put an agent or to monitor these files, and so therefore what we've done with Tripwire Enterprise and the Cloud Management Assessor is allow to be able to go query those particular files uh, using APIs that are exposed by the various cloud vendors, in particular um, AWS S3 and, and the Azure Blob storages, storage platforms. Taking it a step further, we can actually look at, um, we can go discover files and then we can actually tell you um, the particular containers that they um, reside in. And uh, what that will do is it gives you a nice visual um, appearance within Tripwire Enterprise on how your file structures are set up, what files um, are, are up there, and, and again, uh, the, the metadata around them. And I actually have a screenshot that I'm going to show on our next slide that just kind of gives you a, an idea of what that look and feel is. is. So. Uh, moving towards that is that once we bring these files in, they're going to appear as a, just another element in TE. So what that means is that they're just going to appear as elements alongside, you know, your other file servers that might be on premises, or um, you know, if you've got some SAN devices as well. We can put all of those um, files. Um, next to each other so you can uh, see them within one common interface and that being Tripwire Enterprise. We pull the metadata about those files and attributes and we can archive plain text content out of those particular files. And then again just reiterating the ability to assess the files to determine if they've been publicly exposed and alert on that. Moving to step three, we will be transitioning uh, to looking at what this actually looks like within Tripwire Enterprise. So moving to uh, the next slide here, you can see how these buckets, and in, th in this case we're looking at AWS S3 buckets, how they appear within Tripwire Enterprise. Um, so again, we're showing uh, each object within TE and this is allowing us to look and monitor for buckets and objects for addition, modification, and removal of files within those buckets. We can monitor various attributes of those files like size, owner, ACLs, the last time it was modified, etc. So m most anything that you can do on a standard file system that you might have on premises we can do um, using API calls up into S3 and in, in, into this environment. So furthermore, allows us to assess whether or not buckets and objects are exposed publicly. We can identify buckets and objects that are newly exposed, and then again, optionally 
uh, archive those plain text contents. Moving into the next step. So before we move to step three, we just wanted to show a couple subtle differences between the Azure blob storage um, and the Amazon S3. So instead of buckets, you have containers, and instead of objects, you have blobs. Um, the other thing is really what we've found as we've been developing on both of these platforms is the Azure blob service is um, much less complicated than the Amazon S3 service. Um, we think that maybe uh, potentially Amazon uh, just tried to do too much um, with, with allowing too much granularity on how you can set things up um, and ultimately administer, um, which is great if you're a super user, you've been using S3 forever. But the problem is, is a lot of these uh, people who are using S3 are maybe using it for the first time and quite frankly aren't even aware when they're setting up a particular file and making it publicly accessible or publicly facing, and which has led to a lot of publicity around the Amazon S3 storage and publicly facing files and breaches because of that. And um, so we've been happy to see that that, Am that Microsoft, excuse me, has made this uh, much less complicated and, and quite a bit easier to set up. Not to say that there still isn't risk to um, you know having something publicly accessible and so forth. And of course, you do want to have your secure configuration monitoring happening uh, with Tripwire Enterprise in this environment. But again, just wanted to take the time to to point out some subtle differences here. Also, wanted to take the time at this moment to just pause and talk a little bit about what Tripwire can do around benchmarks. Uh, against various policies that are out there. Um, and that is, and one in particular I want to call out is the Center for Internet Security, or CIS, has done a benchmark for both how your, for, for how your Amazon uh, AWS accounts are set up, how your Microsoft Azure accounts are set up, um, we have not yet seen them publish something in terms of how the S3 and blob storage services should be set up, um, but we are uh, actively working with CIS on uh, looking at you know, what might make sense for that particular um, use case. And in, our, in, in Tripwire's case, we actually rolled out the AWS CIS benchmark um, essentially right after AWS published it. CIS was a little slow on getting to the um, Microsoft Azure um, benchmark and, and having an officially uh, officially published um, benchmark for Azure. And so we actually took what we had done with AWS, because we had many of our customers that are using Azure, and so we took it and modeled it off of AWS, and then we actually worked with both Microsoft and CIS on making, um, on making the newest um, CIS benchmark that was recently, re recently released just a month or so ago uh, around Azure and how those um, Azure accounts should be set up. So that's just kind of some interesting um, tidbits on how, how that has all flowed. Um, to be honest, we haven't seen a CIS policy uh, for, for Google Cloud yet. Um, we, do have a, we do have it set up where you can monitor um, those particular environments, but we don't necessarily uh, have a policy test set up yet, um, but we are actively working on that. So as part of the whole public cloud strategy and as you move assets into the public cloud, a lot of times these environments can be very dynamic and part of maybe a overall kind of DevOps life cycle um, and, and integrated into that DevOps life, life cycle. And the third step of this is really making sure that you have the most efficient orchestration set up for you know, your various agents that you might be putting on your EC2 instances and so forth. And so what we've done is actually work with Puppet, Chef, and Ansible to do some custom scripts 
that allow our customers to go to those various marketplaces, the Puppet Forge, the Chef Supermarket, the Ansible Galaxy, and download scripts that the, the Tripwire research and development team have actually scripted themselves to most efficiently deploy our agents. So um, this is really kind of um, one of the first steps of the, the whole DevOps um, life cycle is, is getting the agent out there. Um, and what you want to do as part of that kind of overall DevOps life cycle is also making sure you're securing your entire tool chain as well. And so we actually have um, another CIS policy around as you as we start talking about containers, which we'll be getting into just a, in, in a little bit, um, that you, you actually have some um, benchmarks around the, the orchestration of those containers as well. So I'm talking about orchestration of agents here, but we can also do some things around orchestration of containers. Uh, we have a CIS policy for Kubernetes in that case. Um, and so there's a, a variety of things that we can help um, as we look to um, further integrate our tools into the DevOps lifecycle. Uh, another thing that we're looking to do is automatically perform S SEM, so secure configuration management, or VM, vulnerability and management assessments uh, in pre-production. And that's going to be a nice transition into our next slide. So as mentioned, um, you know, one of the, the key pieces is as, as you're putting um, things, assets, I should say, up into these cloud environments, you still need to make sure that you're scanning them for vulnerabilities. And with our IP360 product, um, not only can you scan the images of uh, the virtual instances of these various assets that are living up in your public cloud and running and, and um, have various workloads in these various environments, we also wanted to make sure that uh, as you guys progress into the maybe the container side of things, that we had coverage there as well. So that's really what I'm calling out here with this slide. Uh, you can see that this is our IP360 product. This is a screenshot out of it. And in this particular screenshot, we're actually looking at um, passes and failures of scans of various Docker images. And um, this is a new capability for us. Um, we're putting a lot of investment in, in this, and uh, we're very excited of, of how far we've gotten. Um, and as you can see here, uh, this is, an, an, again, an example of the containers. But of course, we can do this with vulnerabilities in virtual machines. Um, and, and images as well. So uh, this is some pretty exciting stuff that, that we've been working on um, for for the last uh, six months or so to get get it out get it out to market and be able to allow you not only to scan for vulnerabilities within uh, your public cloud environments, but then also even down a little bit further into the containers themselves. So I've been alluding to this throughout the presentation that really you need to make sure that you do have policies and standards set up for how you're going to set up your, your first of all, your accounts, um, maybe your orchestration platforms, um, and, and all of your tool chains within your public and private cloud environments um, as you're deploying assets. Um, and for that matter, for on-premises as well. And so what this last uh, screenshot is showing here is, is actually Tripwire Inter Enterprise doing some of those policy tests. Um, in this case, we're looking at um, the A Amazon AWS CIS policy 1.1.0. And you can see just a, a couple examples. Is, you know, ensuring that your cloud trails is on, and, and for those that you don't know, cloud trails is actually a logging service that Amazon provides. They do charge for it, um, but we ha have integrations into that that allows for more real-time um, 
uh, risk analysis of your various uh, assets that are in the uh, in, in this particular environment. So there's a couple other things. I'm not going to read through all these, but uh, again, just showing some of the um, capabilities that we've been working on on making sure that we've got the best of breed policy and content in our product that where you can go and test against how your accounts are set up against these uh, best in class benchmarks. So our final slide here is showing um, the various tripwire solutions that we provide that in, in the coverage map of, of those solutions across the various cloud providers. So first you can see there with our integrity monitoring, we can do that within Amazon, we can do that in Microsoft Azure, we can do that in Google, and we can do that in Oracle. Um, similarly, with our secure configuration management, we can do those across all four of those public, public cloud platforms, along with our policy and compliance, which of course is what I was touching on on the last slide. In terms of cloud management assessment, uh, we can do that with Amazon, Azure, and Google. Um, you'll notice there there is the missing checkbox for Google. We need to get this slide updated, but that that was just released uh, here in the last month or so. We have not done anything for Oracle Cloud on that. Um, we do have a customer that is um, actively using Oracle Cloud, and therefore why we've done some testing in those various environments and and uh, move some of our capability into the Oracle Cloud. Um, and so we'll continue to assess uh, how much how much effort we want to give to the Oracle Cloud. Um, but right now we don't have the cloud management account assessment for Oracle Cloud, the vulnerability management or container vulnerability assessment within the, that um, Oracle Cloud environment. We are moving very fast with what we can do in terms of bringing parity along with our Google Cloud environment, um, but we just don't have it everything for, for Oracle, which I don't think is a big surprise to anybody. Um, like I said, we just have a couple of good-sized customers that, that are using Oracle, and therefore one of the reasons we decided to move forward with that. So in closing, I will say, you know, there there is many steps, many things you need to do to make sure that you are secure in these public cloud environments. Um, but there are a lot of uh, tools that uh, and, and services that Tripwire can provide to help you with that. Um, you know, one of the last things that um, I want to mention is the ability now for Tripwire Enterprise to allow and match uh, according to usage in these various environments. And we call this at Tripwire our elastic pricing option. And what this allows us to do is, uh, I should say it allows our customers to actually pay for Tripwire based on actual per hour usage of our particular services in terms of the Tripwire Enterprise platform. And so how it works is essentially you, there's a per hour rate that's set um, and we go gather, gather data uh, on, on your usage and then we bill you at the end of every month in arrears um, on that usage. And so this is great for customers that um, maybe are, first of all, maybe they're a cloud first, you know, cloud first type customer that, you know, moving all of their assets into the cloud and really want to be able to mirror their um, security expense to the uh, actual usage of their uh, particular um, cloud environment, uh, whether it's Azure, uh, a AWS or Google Cloud, we will work in all, and Oracle Cloud for that matter, we will work in all four of those environments. Um, this is going to be very powerful for those customers also that are looking to maybe move away from the, doing the traditional big CapEx expenditures and, and moving more towards the OpEx uh, model and again, pay for what you use model. Um, so that kind of rounds out our overall uh, solution and portfolio uh, around what we uh, can do in the cloud um, to date. We are doing a lot of work, um, in particular, as I mentioned, around what we can do uh, to better enhance 
our, our security posture with, with containers. We have a lot of capabilities for that out and in the market today, but I will say that we're actively working um, on some additional features um, that we expect to come to market here in the next couple of months that we're very excited about. So certainly we're not standing still uh, here at Tripwire around what, what's happening um, in your guys' in, in our various customers' environments. Um, we're excited to be partnering with you as you make this transition to cloud environments and, and using various container um, and orchestration, build tool technologies, and, and making sure that we can integrate our tool set into your tools. So again, as you do um, uh, start assessing assets in these um, different environments, that you can go to a, you know one security vendor such as Tripwire and um, have full coverage across all of your various cloud environments, across your various uh, technology stacks, container technologies, um, and really kind of shift left in terms of your overall assess security posture and security assessment um, as you move through that DevOps life cycle for those of you that um, are out there developing um, software. So um, this, is, this is exciting stuff, and uh, we look forward to partnering with you and, and continuing to build out uh, the best-in-class cloud security features going forward. Appreciate your time today, and uh, please reach out if you have any further questions, um, and we will look forward to discussing this with you further. Thank you. Have a great day. Most people know Tripwire for file integrity monitoring. Well, that was our first product, and we're still the best at detecting integrity changes. But now that Tripwire is part of the Belden family of companies, we can help you with so much more. If you're looking for risk reduction in your OT or IT environment, call Tripwire first. Hi, my name is Onyeka, and I'm the product manager for ExpertOps. Today, I'll be sharing with you how expert ops can add value to your organization. I'll start off by taking you through key market trends and customer pain points that expert ops addresses. By the end of this presentation, you will have a clear understanding for how expert ops solves these customers' pain points and the value that expert ops can provide to your organization. At Tripwire, we strive to ensure that we are addressing emerging market trends and customer problems. And ExpertOps is designed to address three key marker trends. One of these trends is the lack of adequate cybersecurity talent to address growing cybersecurity risk. This is also known as the technical skills gap. Research has shown that by 2020, there will be more than 1.5 million unfilled cybersecurity positions. The second macro trend is the fact that organizations have several tools in their ecosystem to secure their environment. And these understaffed teams have to grapple with managing multiple security tools as a result of these two trends, the technical skills gap and complex environments, organizations are turning to outsourcing aspects of the security practice as a means of mitigating these problems. On a micro level, organizations are experiencing four main pain points. The first pain point are organizations who need file integrity monitoring and secure configuration management deployed efficiently and quickly due to compliance requirements or internal policies or audits. The second challenge that organizations face is achieving and maintaining compliance in the face of new revisions to existing standards and new standards they need to comply with. Organizations could also have an impending event like an audit or a client request and they need to achieve and provide proof of compliance. With a technical skills gap, 
There is also the risk of a significant event going undetected or not prioritized and remediated appropriately. ExtraDoffs is designed to address these market trends and customer pain points. Let's talk about how ExpertOps can help. ExpertOps delivers the industry's best file integrity monitoring solution and secure configuration management solution as a managed service. With ExpertOps, you don't need to worry about recruiting, training, or retaining staff to maintain your FIM and SCM solution. ExpertOps provides a dedicated, trained expert to help you maximize value from your investment. Our solution is easy to deploy and use. We provide personalized consulting, cloud-based infrastructure, a simple subscription pricing, and all of this is available at a low total cost of ownership. ExpertOps solves these customer pain points. For organizations who need file integrity monitoring and secure configuration management deployed quickly and efficiently, ExpertOps is easy to deploy and use. As part of the ExpertOps experience, your dedicated expert will work with you to ensure that you can quickly start deriving value from your investment. ExpertOps provides trained experts to help you realize your business goals and provide best practice recommendations. One of those business goals could be ensuring that you're PCI compliant and ensuring that you're also compliant with subsequent revisions to the standard. In short, we'll help you achieve and prove compliance with audit-ready reports. ExpertOps provides you a dedicated engineer who provides expertise, hands-on tool management, and acts as an extension of your team, ensuring that significant incidents are remediated and that you only focus on events that matter. ExpertOps is available at three service levels, Essential, Advanced, and Advanced Plus. The Essential level is ideal for customers that are just getting started and perhaps need to only secure a few assets and don't have complex requirements. For these customers, we provide a basic level of engagement and provide limited guidance to help them respond to change or compliance issues. At the advanced and advanced plus level is when customers really start to get the benefit of expert ops. The advanced level provides everything included at the essential level and also provides customers guidance on how to tune their roles to eliminate noise so that they can focus on what really matters. We build custom reports and dashboards based on their needs, and customers will also have a dedicated engineer who will work with them to resolve any incidents. Key tripwire apps are also included at the advanced tier. Dynamic Software Reconciliation, or DSR, which ought to promote changes that occur during a window patching process. ExpertOps also includes Event Sender, which feeds change and in policy information into an aggregation source like Splunk or ArcSight. These are typically paid apps, but they are included in ExpertOps at no additional cost. Advanced Plus includes all the benefits from the previous levels. In addition, we provide best practice guidance for maximizing value from your investment. A dedicated expert will assist you with change reconciliation and promote changes. 
Advanced Plus customers will also have a program coordinator that engages with them on the technical level and also on higher level business goals like compliance targets, organization goals, to ensure that we support your strategic initiatives. We provide integrations with ticketing systems like ServiceNow and JIRA and CMDB tools. ExpertOS provides a lower total cost of ownership to customers because components that would result in additional cost to customers is already included in ExpertOps. And these costs include both hard costs like the cost of hardware and infrastructure, support and maintenance costs, as well as other costs that we may not typically think of, like training, operational costs, and the costs associated with hiring, retaining, and turnover of skilled staff. With expert ops, you don't have to worry about any of these costs as they are covered by the simple annual subscription price. Let's take a high-level look at the architecture. We work with the customer to install agents on the assets the customer wants monitored. The agents work regardless of where the assets are. It could be in one data center or multiple data centers or a cloud data center. The agents are configured to route their connections through the proxy appliance. The proxy collects all the incoming agent connections and sends it over to a cloud environment through a secured VPN connection. Depending on the source IP and customer credentials, the incoming sessions are routed to the specific customer pod. Each customer has their own dedicated instance of Tripwire and their own dedicated database on the back end. Each customer pod is separated from the other customers. There is no commingling of data. Customers access their instance or customer pod through a web browser and the URL that we provide them. Each customer has a dedicated URL and requires two-factor authentication to gain access to their dashboard. The ExpertOps engineer logs in to the full admin view of the console using two-factor authentication and goes through their workflow depending on the service tier. The ExpertOps engineer has weekly status calls with the customer to ensure that we are meeting your needs. ExpertOps is available in North America, the EU, and parts of Asia and the Middle East. Please reach out to your account manager if you'd like to learn more about ExpertOps and how it can meet your particular needs. Thank you. Tripwire Log Center helps you focus on the most important events in a sea of changes. Search and filter log data from multiple sources so you can respond quickly to anomalies and suspicious activity. Reduce your workload with a simple and reliable solution for meeting regulatory evidence requirements. Hello all, my name is Jason Eiler. I'm the Manager of Services and Solutions here at Tripwire. And today I'd like to talk with you about using Tripwire apps to automate some of the workflows you may have in your environment and integrate with other solutions that you're using in your enterprise. All right, first a little bit of background. As you may know, Tripwire Enterprise and IP360 have very rich and comprehensive APIs, which was originally created to allow customers to roll their own workflow integrations. However, over time, the primary consumers of the APIs ended up being the consulting team. So we would build these little one-offs for individual customers, leave them behind as a project deliverable, and then be on our way. So this was a great model, but uh, eventually we realized that several of these product extensions had potential far beyond their original scope. 
and so we made a decision to formally productize them. So some of the main benefits that can be achieved by these particular utilities is they can integrate workflows between Tripwire Enterprise, IP360, and other solutions you have in your environment. They can improve visibility of the configuration and compliance state across your entire enterprise. We can simplify compliance, not just on the achieving of those compliance objectives, but also demonstrating the outcome of your compliance initiatives to your auditors. And we can greatly streamline the change approvals that you may have in place with your ITSM systems. All right, here we have a view of our overall Tripwire portfolio. We have our three core products, Tripwire Enterprise, Tripwire IP360, and Tripwire Log Center, commonly abbreviated TLC. Now, each of these products has existing integrations with uh, the others, uh, which offer a great deal of additional value. Uh, the more of these you have, the more value you get from those integration capabilities. However, those integrations are not as well suited to consuming data from other systems or externalizing it to be consumed by other uh, tools in your environment. So this is where the Tripwire apps come in to kind of bridge all of these for both data coming in and flowing out. So we have seven different apps that we're going to be reviewing today. You may notice that most of them are uh, uh, aligned over here with Tripwire Enterprise, in part because Tripwire Enterprise is the tool that has the richest level of integration capabilities. But we do absolutely have uh, tools and solutions that provide an incremental value for IP360 and for TLC. All right, first up we have TE Integration Framework, or TEIF as it's commonly called. This is probably our most mature and established solution in our apps toolkit. And the basic value this offers is it provides a way for you to automatically reconcile changes made in your environment against tickets that you have established in your ticketing system. So let's say you're using ServiceNow for the sake of argument, and you have a change that has been defined and approved, it's worked through the channels, and it's ready for implementation in, in your uh, production environment. So once that change has been pushed to those systems, Tripwire Enterprise will scan your environment, detect all those changes, and then hand those changes off to the TEIF framework. Uh, then TEIF will query ServiceNow and search for any tickets that are authorized for those hosts in question. If it finds a matching ticket, we will compare the details on the ticket against the changes observed in your environment and then perform a reconciliation process. If we find alignment, the changes are promoted within TE and the ticket status can be updated in ServiceNow. However, if there are changes observed in your environment that do not correlate to what we find uh, in ServiceNow, then we can open an incident, which can then be appropriately prioritized and investigated by your team. So in addition to ServiceNow, we also have packaged integrations with Remedy, Jira, Sharewell, uh, CA Service Desk, and we have kind of an all-purpose uh, integration module, which we can use to tailor a reconciliation process around even homegrown systems. Our basic rule of thumb is if you have a database behind your ticketing system, then you can build an integration for it. So this tool has uh, been in place in customers' environments for many, many years, and is providing a tremendous amount of value. Speaking of ServiceNow, uh, in addition to the integration with Tripwire Enterprise we just reviewed, we also have an integration with IP360. So the way this works is IP360 will scan your environment, assessing all of the assets and providing a detailed vulnerability evaluation of each. And then uh, through an integration that lives on the mid-server in your environment, we have a connector which extracts that vulnerability state information from IP360 and then imports it into ServiceNow and populates the vulnerability tables therein. So this now makes all of the vulnerability data that IP360 was able to harvest from your environment and now makes it available to your security and operations team. This provides them the ability to quickly 
evaluate the current state of any asset, any CI in your environment, drill down into the particular details, or they can look at the higher level and monitor the solution through a real-time dashboard uh, that gives you the ability to view your organization's current risk posture and potential impact to business services. So this app is right now available in the ServiceNow Marketplace and is a great solution for any customers with both IP360 and ServiceNow. Next up we have Dynamic Software Reconciliation, or DSR. DSR was essentially created to address the Patch Tuesday challenge, which can be a significant obstacle for any integrity monitoring solution. So the basic scenario has Microsoft releasing the latest batch of hotfixes and security patches on third Tuesday of the month. And then over the course of the next few days, the security and operations team will download the appropriate patches, test them against the systems in their environment, make sure that nothing uh, inappropriate breaks, and then schedule the implementation of those patches in an upcoming maintenance window. At that time, all of the appropriate patches are deployed to the InScope systems and another round of testing to make sure everything is still working just fine. And then, excellent, another Patch Tuesday under our belt, and we go on home. That night, Tripwire Enterprise will scan your environment and detect potentially thousands of changes scattered across your systems. And the kicker is there's no clear correlation between the changes observed and the hotfixes that were deployed. There's not really any way to connect those dots. So what often happens in organizations is, you know, if they don't really have the time to go through and research each and every individual one, they just say, you know what, let's just go ahead and promote everything. They kind of declare a change amnesty uh, for, that, for that event. Um, that's a very tempting approach, but it leaves a pretty significant window of opportunity for any attacker who knows about your process. That gives them the opportunity to insert malware or any kind of malicious code into your environment and then it will become baked into your baseline. And so that's, that's a risk that many organizations are really not comfortable with. So here's where DSR comes in. Um, when it's executed, DSR will detect that new hotfixes are applied to your system and then it will query Microsoft and retrieve a manifest of each of those hotfixes directly from the source. Here are the files and the registry keys that were uh, rolled up into that particular hotfix. And then it compares that manifest against the changes observed on each individual asset. If it finds a connection, it'll promote the changes. If not, then the unreconciled, unauthorized, unapproved changes will flow into a dashboard, which can then be your punch list for your security team to go research why these unauthorized changes happen on these systems. So in a nutshell, this is kind of sifting out the needle from the larger haystack. Although it was originally developed specifically for Microsoft hotfixes in mind, uh, DSR can also be used for YUM repositories and for Red Hat satellite repos. And it provides a great deal of value and benefit to customers with any platform out there. Now let's talk about Whitelist Profiler. Whitelist Profiler was originally built to help address a particularly challenging set of requirements in the NERC SIP compliance framework, which is intended to define cybersecurity requirements for power utilities in North America. However, Whitelist Profiler's capabilities and value extend far beyond this particular market. The key control that led to Whitelist Profiler is a requirement around network accessible ports. Basically, the requirement states that for a given critical asset, only authorized ports should be enabled. If it's necessary, document it. If it's not, go ahead and shut it down. You know, sounds easy, right? Not that hard? Yeah, it turns out it's anything but. There really aren't many good tools built into any system to help with this. So most entities had to tackle this manually. What this usually involved is a guy with a spreadsheet. He'd go around log in to each system with credentials that may or may not be accurate, and then run netstat. Copy and paste the results into a spreadsheet, log out, move on to the next system, rinse and repeat. Then once all this very laborious data gathering has been accomplished, then he gets to go back and do the sorting and the reconciliation, and then the research for all the software installed on the system. What are the ports that are appropriate for that particular piece of software? So that is not an easy thing to find. But, you know, enough legwork, you can get it done. 
Then once you have your grand list of everything that's appropriate, then you have to go back through to those same systems and shut down anything that's not authorized, which is another substantial amount of work. So this process is very time consuming, it's very error prone, but it can get you through an audit, you know, all of about once. This is not something that is scalable, and this is certainly not something that's going to give you any ongoing security benefit. So here's where Whitelist Profiler comes in. The way Whitelist Profiler works is in a uh, CSV file, you codify the authorized ports for your environment and associated services, and then you include uh, description, documentation links, justification, sign off, whatever fields you want to help provide context as to why this particular port is useful and necessary for your organization. In addition, into this file, you specify which systems this port, the service is appropriate for. And then at execution time, Tripwire agent on the asset retrieves a list of all the network ports and pulls those into Tripwire Enterprise Database. From there, Whitelist Profiler will extract that information, compare that against this whitelist, this CSV file, where you've codified everything that's appropriate, and then perform a reconciliation. If it finds a match of a port that is open on a system that corresponds to an entry in the CSV file, it documents that in a report, a documentation report suitable to hand directly to your auditor, and it builds a little stanza, essentially, out of the justification, description, all the other fields that you put in the CSV file. However, if it finds a port on that system that is not authorized and has not been declared as appropriate for that asset, then it flags as an exception where it will show up on your dashboards for immediate drill down. So in the process, we can take the validation operation, which could consume literally weeks to months of man time for a large organization, and boil it down to an execution that lasts a few seconds at most on a particular asset. And that turns it from a process that is primarily geared towards compliance to one that offers you very timely, very accurate security benefit. So originally developed specifically for the network ports and the services attached to those ports, um, Wireless Profiler is now capable of validating many other control points in your environment. So you can use Whitelist Profiler for users and for groups in your environment on each individual system, as well as the software running on those hosts and many other things as well. So um, again, originally scoped for NERC SIP utilities. Um, Whitelist Profiler offers very real benefit for PCI compliance, as well as many other frameworks. So there's a tremendous amount of benefit that can be gleaned out of Whitelist Profiler, and this is one of the tools that is undergoing the most active development. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of great things in store. Look forward to sharing them with you soon. Next, we have Event Sender. Event Sender is a fairly straightforward tool. Essentially, it takes existing TE change and compliance reports, distills them into syslog messages, and sends them out to your SIM of choice, be it TLC, Splunk, ArcSide, or what have you. Event Sender is a great fit for organizations that use their SIM as a single pane of glass to consolidate data feeds from other resources in their environment. And we can contribute to that feed in the form of detailed or summary changes, uh, compliance results on individual assets, or high-level scoring summaries, and more. So you can kind of view Event Sender as a one-trick pony, but nobody really minds because it has a really, really good trick. Also, for our customers who rely on Splunk for their data aggregation and analysis across the enterprise, we offer official Splunk apps for both Tripwire Enterprise and IP360. Oh, as you probably know, TE offers detailed change and compliance views, and IP360 offers rich host and vulnerability intelligence data. What Splunk brings to the table is the ability to visualize the data in easy-to-implement dashboards. So this combined solution can deliver fantastic security visibility for continuous risk assessment, incident investigation, and correlation with other data sources in your environment. 
Both apps are currently available in the Splunk app marketplace, and I would absolutely encourage you to check them out. All right, this brings us to Console Orchestrator. And to be honest, this isn't a tool that provides much benefit to most of our customers, but for those who need it, it is absolutely indispensable. Most of our customers really only need a single trip or enterprise console, and that's fantastic. Uh, but for others, multiple consoles are kind of a way of life. Maybe the organization wants to separate installs by business unit or by geography, or perhaps they want to monitor dev test environments separately from production. Uh, for these organizations, it can be a real challenge to keep the different environments properly synchronized so that a given report, let's say developed in one console, is available elsewhere. So this is where Console Orchestrator comes in. So essentially, Console Orchestrator is a way to synchronize the configuration of multiple TE consoles in your environment. The way it works is you point it at a particular console, we'll call that the source console, and you can extract from that instance um, a variety of configuration details. You can do reports, uh, either individual or the entire patch. You can do rules, tasks, um, compliance policies, at whatever level of granularity you wish to clone. It will then extract that information from one console and then deploy it, perform an import of that same data to the other consoles in your environment. So Console Orchestrator is not a content authoring solution per se. It's also not a um, visualization tool. It is, however, an exceptional way to ensure that all the consoles in your environment are properly configured. And uh, in this way, you can ensure a tremendous amount of consistency and reliability and greatly reduce the risk of configuration drift across uh, the different instances in your environment. All right, finally, we come to the commanders, Tripwire Enterprise Commander and IP360 Commander. So, as mentioned originally, both TE and IP360 have very comprehensive APIs, uh, which is a great thing. Uh, however, the reality is um, an API is a resource that is tremendously valuable if you're a developer, uh, not so for most other people. And at the end of the day, in uh, most IT environments, there's not all that many developers that are charged with managing tools like this. Um, however, scripting is a much more accessible skill. So essentially, the commanders provide a way to extract the value and all the capabilities of the API and express them in a simple command line tool, which you can then use to build into any uh, onboarding, any operational, any automation scripting you may want to put in place in your environment. So this takes something that is very complex and very abstract and makes it very accessible. So um, you can kind of look at the commanders collectively as a monkey wrench or a Swiss Army knife, which you can use in some fashion to tackle virtually any integration or automation uh, workflow out there. And the best part about this is both tools are now completely free. They're freely available to all existing Tripwire Enterprise and IP360 customers. So if you log into the TCC under Products, you will find both of these tools listed under Extras. And so we very much encourage you to check them out. There's a lot of amazingly wonderful things you can do. All right, and uh, by way of summary, I wanted to leave you with this um, little matrix showing the various apps on the left and the different uh, domains of usefulness where these apps in, can provide value. So this is not a hard and fast rule. You know, we're not going to tell you that if you are using Tripwire Enterprise for network security, then we're only going to sell you Wireless Profiler or the Commanders. You know, really, we'll, we'll provide you whatever tools best suit your particular needs. This is just kind of a way to uh, provide a snapshot of where we find the greatest correlation between the functionality offered by the individual app and the particular vertical or particular domain for the use case for the Tripwire solution. So um, yeah, at the end of the day, we're really excited about the 
tools that we have available, and uh, we'd love to have any conversations about uh, utility or discuss other use cases and workflows. We'd love to have those conversations with you and your team. All right, that's all the time I have today. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you have any additional questions or follow-ups uh, or workflows or integration ideas you'd like to discuss, by all means, please reach out to us. We'd love to continue those discussions. Have a nice day. Thank you for attending today. We hope that you found the presentations informative and useful. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand version of the webcast. If you'd like to receive proof of attendance for this webcast, please respond to that email. Also, you may just be the winner of a $5 Starbucks e-card. We hope that you'll join us for future webcasts. Check the event schedule at tripwire.com. Also check out our award-winning blog, The State of Security, to find the latest in security news as well as thought-provoking security topics. Thank you, and have a great day.